San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Friday. It is February 5th, and we're going to talk to Justin in a moment because since the early edition of GMSA, we've actually had a few showers pop up on radar. We'll check in with him momentarily. Well, happy Friday, and we have an interesting article for you. Uh, this is talking about the best and the worst states for singles going into 2021. All right, so new studies out. States receive scores and 27 metrics that fall under three key dimensions, including dating opportunities, dating economics, and romance and fun. So there's the article right there. So do you want to hear the best ones? Sure, we yeah. do. Yeah, so these are the best <laughs> states for singles in the U.S. and Texas is on the list. Yeah, there you go. So Florida, of course, you see there's number one, Texas is two, Pennsylvania three, Wisconsin four, and New York coming in at number five. What are the five worst states for singles here in the United mm -hmm. States? And we have that list too. It is Arkansas, followed by... Hawaii. Hawaii. And then North Dakota. West Virginia and New Mexico. There you go. They're the worst ones. Right yeah, the there. worst ones. By the way, there's a separate study of the best and worst cities for singles. And out of 182 cities, San Antonio ranked 48th for similar metrics. Yeah. And at first we were like, hey, that's not too bad. But then it's like it has Lubbock, a smaller town at 49. 49, yeah. yeah. So about the same compatibility there for uh, some of the uh, the worst city for singles, by the way, Glendale, California. But Brownsville and Laredo are also in the bottom five for the worst cities in the country for mm -hmm. singles. So San Antonio is actually not faring too bad. Not not too bad when compared to that. And of course, we have the whole the state at number two. Maybe we would have done better if would it, Laredo and Brownsville did better. I don't know. It's possible. Let's look at today's nine at nine. America is on the verge of getting a third vaccine to fight COVID-19. Johnson & Johnson is now seeking emergency use authorization for its shot, known to be 100% effective. The FDA says outside experts will review the vaccine February 26th. U.S. House of Representatives has officially taken Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene off her committee assignments. House voted 230 to 199 to remove Greene from the Budget and Education Committees with 11 Republicans siding with Democrats. This comes after she was accused of spreading conspiracy theories. A New Mexico State Police officer was shot and killed on a highway in Las Cruces yesterday. The officer has been identified as 28-year-old Darian Jarrett. Authorities say the attacker was also killed in a shootout. Another officer was injured but is expected to recover. Former President Donald Trump is rejecting a request from House impeachment managers to testify under oath for his second impeachment trial. Legally, the former president does not need to appear, but House managers say any refusal could be used at trial to support arguments for a conviction. The Senate trial is expected to start next week. Ford is cutting production of its F-150 pickup because of a shortage of semiconductors. General Motors and some electronics producers are also reducing operations due to the shortage. Nissan has revamped its classic mid-sized truck for the first time in 17 years. The 2022 Frontier has a standard V6 engine, which works for drivers in the city or weekend off-road adventures. No word on a price tag yet, but the 2021 model starts at $27,000. Trader Joe's is temporarily doubling its pandemic pay for hourly workers to an additional $4 an hour. The company says it's their way of saying thank you to its employees. Apple could be getting into virtual reality. The company reports that they are working on a VR headset with more than a dozen cameras and advanced technology for eye tracking. A possible price tag, $3,000. You can now get jeans with a Pikachu on them to commemorate its 25th anniversary. Pokemon is teaming up with Levi Strauss on a new Pokemon-themed fashion line. They will be available from Levi's starting on February 15th. And that's today's 9 at 9. And if you're watching that right now thinking, I'm not going to buy that. Trust me, a lot of people are going to buy that stuff. It's cute. Yeah. I, I think it looks really cute. I think I think it's going to do well. I think so, too. Justin is here to get an update. And uh, Justin, earlier we were talking about the fact that since the early morning show, yeah, it's been windy and it's been cooler and drier, but we've had some stuff pop up in radar since the early show. The radar's getting a little active. We've got some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms out there. In fact, a couple hours ago, there was some small hail, some very small hail reported up around Marble Falls. So uh, there is a little bit of a disturbance coming through. We could see a little bit of rain this morning. We're not expecting a lot. 
51 degrees right now. Dew point is at 31. North northeasterly winds at about 14. Those winds have been gusty this morning. It feels pretty chilly out there, especially when you compare it to yesterday. We only get up to about 60 degrees today. That's it with uh, lots of clouds. We may see some clearing this afternoon. So let's show you the radar and show you where this action is right now. Sort of lining up I-35 there to the south of San Antonio. This is moving east. So it looks like a good clip there, the uh, southern part of Bear County. And uh, right now we're starting to see some of that uh, heavier rain move into Divine, down to Moore, and uh, maybe even Von Army. You may get clipped by some of this rain. And it looks like we may get a little more development even here in San Antonio. So we're not going to rule out some rain here. Uh, just uh, be aware it could be a little bit wet. But for a small period, this little disturbance is rolling through. And once it gets through here, next couple of hours, the rain chances end. And we may get some, again, clearing skies this afternoon. So we're going to call for a chance of rain this morning, then cloudy skies the noontime, and then clearing out a little bit this afternoon up to 60. It stays a little bit breezy with northeast chilly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Great weekend, busy week next week. We're going to break it all down for you coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, Justin, we look forward to that. Taking a look out with Transguide, there's 410 and Perrin Vital. Things looking fine at this hour. Top stories we're following for you today. Several people have been displaced after their apartment building caught fire overnight. San Antonio fire crews say it all started around 1230 this morning at the Rio Springs apartments in the 2800 block of West Hutchins Place. Fire officials say the fire was so big, the floors collapsed on each other. Uh, crews say the building needs to be knocked down. Everyone, along with their pets, were able to make it out safely. However, one firefighter was taken to the hospital as a precaution. There's about $175,000 worth of damage. Arson investigators are now looking into what caused the fire to start. Firefighters faced weather challenges overnight while trying to put out another house fire on the city's southeast side. Crews say the strong winds threatened to spread the flames to neighboring homes. It happened around 3.30 this morning at a vacant house in the 1300 block of Schley Avenue. Firefighters tell us they tried to knock out the fire quickly to keep it from spreading. Say at one point the winds were whipping at about 20 miles an hour. No one was living in the home, but a man was inside a detached garage behind it. Crews say he was able to get out safely. Arson is now investigating the cause of that fire, but it looks like it may have started near the kitchen. One of the suspects involved in the shooting of a Balcones Heights police officer this week is believed to be in custody in Mexico, according to Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Sheriff Salazar believes Tamaulipas State Police in Mexico have Sigifredo Montemayor in custody. Sheriff Salazar hopes to have more information later today. The sheriff's office says it seized the vehicle they believe was used to take Sigifredo across the border and will look for more evidence in the case. In the meantime, Salazar says Wilfredo Montemayor is still on the run and he is believed to be still, still here in the San Antonio with area, area. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Happening today at noon, there will be a virtual press conference on the 2021 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. It will be taking place in San Antonio. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg says that the NCAA Vice President Lynn Holzman and others will be outlining the planning efforts into the sports event. Be sure to tune into the news at noon for more information. In your morning headlines, the U.S. added jobs in January and an unusual aggravated robbery at a restaurant. Our David Sears is here to explain all of this. Good and morning. One more story before the big game. Okay. One more big game story. Okay. Right? Yeah, that's right. So it's kind of like big game coverage of like this big game. game. This big game. Uh-huh. Yeah. The Spurs tip off Saturday night. Okay. Oh, you talk about the other big game. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's that one, too. <laughs> we'll get to that in just a second. All right, we're going to start with some disappointing jobs report numbers, though. Now, the U.S. employers did add some jobs, but only 49,000 of them. This follows that decline of 227,000 in December. The unemployment rate did drop from 6.7% to 6.3%, but according to the Labor Department, the drop occurred because some found a job, others just stopped looking altogether. Doorbell camera video, bus out of control, snow embankment crash. Not good. This is a city bus heading down a hill, coming up on some cars that were stopped at a light. The driver swerves to avoid a collision and ends up in the embankment that was lined with trees. There were 13 passengers on board that bus. Only one was actually hurt, and it was a minor injury, although one of the riders, Joshua Andler, thought it could have been a whole lot worse. 
if that driver had not been speeding down that hill, that never would have happened. What do you remember thinking when this was going on? I didn't know what was going to happen. I thought everybody was going to probably die. Yeah, you saw it right there. The shot of the front of the bus, the window busted out, all kinds of damage to that thing. And that rider was correct. It could have been a lot worse. Fortunately for them, it wasn't. All right, the search is on in New York for four robbers. They just walked into a Chanel store in Manhattan in the middle of the afternoon and started clearing off all the shelves. They ran out with about $160,000 worth of handbags and wallets. They got into a getaway car, took off. No one was hurt. The NYPD believes that these guys are part of a larger street crew involved in some type of burglaries and robberies at other high-end stores around Manhattan. Police say that gangs of three to nine people have pulled off about 20 jobs since last September. The fact that they are wearing masks making it more difficult to identify the guys. However, they do have some persons of interest. I understand our chicken is good, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 that's some expensive chicken these guys got there. It was just pretty stupid and crazy at the same time. Yeah, okay, that's uh, that's a different a different robbery. We'll get to, <laughs> no one was hurt in the Pasadena uh, chicken store robber. What happened was this guy walked into this uh, this chicken store out in Pasadena, and instead of asking for money, he asked for chicken. He held a gun to the guy's head. So the guy happened to be a cook, so stop and give me all your oh chicken. Oh my goodness! First, he was upset because the guy asked him to put on a mask, and that's when he pulled out the gun. Oh. And so then the guy was the cook, and he said, "Well, there's no money around here, so I guess I'll go get him some chicken." Didn't have a bag. The guy wanted to put chicken in a bag. He had to give him some like to-go order boxes and fill them up with chicken. That so, is a different kind of robbery. Yeah, so <laughs> actually, no one was hurt. Well, All that's right, good. In that one. So that's, and that's what that guy was talking about just a second ago. I said, that's kind of stupid. But, you know, that was his quote, not mine. Right. All right. Finally, in Manhattan, Kansas, they love their chiefs and apparently they love their puppies. The Zapata family dog had a litter of pups. So since they're Chiefs fans, what do you think they're going to name the dogs? After some Chiefs players, her puppies are named Patrick after Patrick Mahomes, Aww. Travis after Travis Kelsey, Pringle for Byron Pringle, Bell after Le'Veon Bell, and Breland after Bashad Breland, and Ty for Tyreek Hill. Aww. After a few months, they're going to put the puppies up for adoption. So there you go. So like that's like half the offense right there. And I'm sure Chiefs fans like will be looking to adopt these pups as well. Yeah, we're not looking for a dog of a game either. We want a big time game. We do, we want a big game. It's probably could be a high scoring affair. You know, they, that's what people say because it's the right. Bucks and it's the Chiefs. It's Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. It'll be like, you know, 13 to 10. You, no, think, it, you think it'll be on the low end? I, I don't have any idea. All right, we're going to talk about I, it I, coming up. Not good All right, yesterday. thank you, David. Right. 910 right now, 53 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. A man is nursing disabled dogs back to health in Bangkok, the reason why he started the Man That Rescues Dogs Foundation. Three young brothers bringing the community together to help wounded veterans, how their idea has inspired many around the country. Plus, a local seven-year-old is going above and beyond to help those in her community the impact she's making on the homeless community here in San Antonio. To inspire others to make a change with their own two hands. That's a message a seven-year-old girl spreading through a community service project. Ella Fall started Blessings Bag with the help of her parents, family, classmates, and friends who have made it possible for her to fill and distribute bags for those experiencing homelessness in our community. Alicia Beretta sat down with a young girl to learn more about her goals and how people can help. A pair of little hands started it all two years ago. You can give with your own two hands. Ella Fall began making colorful paper popsicles. This is like a fruit punch. It has all the flavors mostly on it. Oh, that looks it's yummy. Strawberry. For people that donate like money, so if they donate money, then they get a surprise that is a popsicle, a paper popsicle. The money raised is to help others. Well, I feel kind of special and happy that they get to have it. And since then, with the help of friends, she's hosted lemonade and hot cocoa stands to carry on with her mission. Every stand that she's done, it's always a donation and it's always given to a nonprofit. Ella's desire to give now takes shape through these drawstring bags. 150 of them to be exact. We make a schedule of who's going to get the bags. These are Ella's blessing bags. This is like a toiletry bag. 
that has masks, soap, bandages, and lots of good stuff. She, along with her friends and family, personally hand them to folks struggling with homelessness. So can I tell you a story? So like, one time I, I made like, I gave someone a blessing bag and I sit in the bag so I can see a little bit and when I, I just saw them open the bag right away and I really kind of made me smile and I really feel special about that. Ella still remembers the first person she ever handed a blessing bag to. Justin. I can never forget his name. Well, we prayed for that he gets to stay healthy. Now, she continues to pray for Justin and others in similar situations and raises money for the bags as each of them cost eight to $10 to fill. But perhaps the most valuable item inside is priceless. I traced my hand and I said, you can give with your own two hands. And on the back there's a a poem by Ben Harper. I can change the world with my own two hands. Make a better place with my own two hands. Make a kinder place with my own two hands. I can make peace on earth with my own two hands. And Ella's mom said it best. We can learn so much from children and it's actually Ella's classmates from kindergarten last year and first grade this year who have helped make her add those handwritten notes and they're seriously the cutest thing. So what's next for Ella and her family? Well, they plan to continue fundraising and hope that with that money they can add items specific to the season. So for spring, they plan to add maybe an umbrella or raincoat and then of course for those Texas summer days, some sunscreen. Mark Steph. And Alicia, when will the bags be distributed? And I know a lot of people are watching right now. They're going to want to help Ella. How can people donate? So where can they donate to help her cause? So Ella's family and friends are getting together and they're actually going to personally deliver these bags throughout the next couple of weeks. And yes, for anyone at home who's interested in carrying on this mission of Blessings Bag and help Ella or maybe do a project of their own, they can head over to their Facebook page. And I listed all those details now on ksat.com and it includes that link so you can get in touch with the family. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Justin joins us now and you're, you're saying some people might not be surprised to have heard thunder in the last hour or two. Yeah, there was a little bit of thunder and lightning with some of the showers and the thunderstorms that are now working through the area. Nothing severe or anything like that, but don't be surprised if you hear a rumble of thunder. Let's get right to the radar, show you where the rain is. It uh, right now is trying to work its way into San Antonio. We've got some showers up along 281 near Canyon Lake and then back down towards Leon Springs, seeing some downpours there and also seeing some rain around Medina Lake. This is working its way towards Highway 16 and again towards Interstate 10. These are all moving east and northeast at a pretty quick clip further south. Some showers starting to move in around Von Army, 1604 on the south side, Somerset. You're going to get some showers here soon if it's not already raining. Lytle, Natalia, Divine, all looking at some rain right now. Again, it could be brief, heavy rain, but it's just not going to last all that long. Even Pearsall down I-35 starting to get a little bit of rain as well. This is a little disturbance working through. We thought it might generate some sprinkles this morning, but it's doing more than that. It is uh, producing some bona fide showers and again, a couple of rumbles of thunder. We had some reports of some very small hail up around Marble Falls earlier. Once this moves through, though, we should be done with the rain. I think we give it another couple of hours. The rain will be east of us and uh, we'll uh, be looking at dry conditions, although a little bit cloudy. It's going to take some time for these clouds to clear out, probably not until the afternoon. Cloudy right now in San Antonio, 51 degrees. North northeasterly winds at about 14 miles per hour, gusting to 23. And uh, we're at 46 Bernie Stage, 48 Comfort, 53 Hondo, 55 down there in Pleasanton, 52 Gonzalez, 55 in Kennedy, and 54 right now in Del Rio. Del Rio set a record high yesterday. They were at 92, so a big difference today. Wind gusts, uh, 23 here in San Antonio, gusting to 17, and Gonzalez gusting to 18 in Pleasanton. As we look at the forecast, we're going to see those clouds again clear out this afternoon. Showers moving east. And then the clouds will build back in tomorrow morning. We'll start off with cloudy skies, but Saturday afternoon looks great. In fact, the weekend itself looks fantastic. Once we get rid of the clouds, we'll get up to around 70 on Saturday and 70 on Sunday with sunny skies. You can't beat that. 
really good looking weekend. Here's the current setup. That front is pushed into deep south Texas. You see that disturbance working through, producing rain from San Antonio up to Dallas. Temperature wise, 45 in Dallas, 37 Wichita Falls, 33 in Amarillo. So this air mass is not bitterly cold. What is bitterly cold is the sort of secondary air mass that is working its way out of Canada. Negative 5 right now in International Falls. It's going to get much worse there. Minneapolis, negative 13 potentially by Sunday morning. We'll be watching this Arctic air plunging south through the week next week. Still some questions on timing here, but we think by Tuesday we'll still be in the 70s, but parts of North Texas could be in the 30s. By Wednesday, this front could be getting close to our area. And that will start the process of bringing in some of this very cold air. By Thursday, we could be looking at highs in the 40s. It is going to feel like winter again by the end of next week. We could also see some rain or precipitation associated with this, so stay tuned. 70 over the weekend, 73 Monday, 75 Tuesday, and then those big changes arriving by late in the week. And by today, uh, by the way, today only around 60 degrees with those clouds staying in place. Not all that warm, guys. All right, still not too bad. We'll be prepared for next weekend. Yes. Thanks. 922, 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, what started off as a hobby turned into so much more. After the break, three brothers who have given back to wounded warriors in San Diego. It's Friday and your good news. 27 disabled dogs being nursed back to health at a shelter in Bangkok, Thailand by a foundation called The Man That Rescues Dogs. It was started by a man who moved to the area in 2002. He began to grow concerned about the poor conditions of strays. Most are victims of accidents and have doggy wheelchairs that support their hind legs. Shelters looking for donations amid the pandemic. The dogs just looking for a little care and room to run. Three brothers making wooden flags help wounded veterans in San Diego. Wesley, Mason, and AJ say they were inspired to start making the flags when they saw a similar one in a neighbor's yard. Their mom and their mom, Nadine, says it started as a homeschooling project last summer to teach them responsibility and charity. Well, the boys' new hobby is turning in more than they ever imagined. They have raised more than $1,400, which they have donated to the Wounded Warrior Project. We never thought it would turn into this, not in a million years. People have been really touched by these flags, which really surprised us. Those boys say they'll keep making the flags as long as people want them. Nice gesture and also very nice looking. Don't they, don't they look great? Yeah, they look great. <laughs> 926, 53 degrees. Owen Wilson and Selma Hayek move between realities in bliss. A look at the new movie streaming now. Still ahead. From weird bets to lots of food, I mean, we mean a lot of food. There's a whole lot that goes into the day of the big game. After the break, R.J. Marquez joins us, explains what we can expect this Sunday. February is Heart Health Month, and one of our very own here at KSET survived a heart attack. His story and why your health should never be taken for granted next. Welcome back to GMSA at 9. The last year has been dominated by news of the pandemic. But when it comes to your health, doctors say you need to remember heart disease is still a very real danger. February is American Heart Month, and Max Massey interviewed one of our coworkers here at KSET who survived a heart attack and is now spreading the message of why it's important to be aware of your heart health. 46 years old and I had a heart attack. I didn't even know what was happening. Tim Stewart is not only a photojournalist here at KSET, he's also a friend who survived a heart attack. And the wife and I were sitting at a wedding reception and uh, I just got this flop sweat and, and this burning sensation down my neck and shoulders and just it kept getting worse and worse and worse. A scary situation for anyone, but even more terrifying because Tim, the father of two, knows how dangerous heart disease can be. My father had just turned 55 when he had the one heart attack that took his life. We see people even without risk factors having heart disease. So unfortunately, everybody is, uh, you know, just vulnerable to it. Uh, but the good thing is I want people to, to know that they can empower themselves to change that uh, if that's in their future. Heart disease can be genetic and can come in various ways, but it can also be prevented. Listen to your doctor, listen to your body. You know, there's some preemptive things that you can do. In general, eating, you know, plenty of fruits and vegetables, uh, lean meat, avoiding fried foods, avo avoiding a lot of refined 
processed foods and avoiding you know very high sugary foods, especially if uh, you are diabetic. Uh, if you are diabetic, really staying uh, on top of what your blood glucose is, what your blood sugar is. And here in San Antonio, heart disease is a prevalent problem, a problem you need to be aware of and a problem that doctors here see on a daily basis. Heart disease is a major problem uh, in San Antonio. And part of that is because there's a connection with diabetes. Unfortunately, diabetes does is one of the major risk factors uh, for heart disease. And not only that, it can make it difficult to recognize because people with diabetes don't have typical symptoms. After triple bypass surgery, Tim's life really has changed forever. And that's uh, a statin cholesterol medicine, it's blood pressure medicine, and it's a blood thinner. And I'll be taking those three medicines for the rest of my life. However, I hope that that life is a lot longer than 40 something. And on top of asking others to live a healthier lifestyle, Tim has some simple advice for everyone out there. Don't take it for granted. I think I did. I'll never do it again. If you have any questions, there are resources easily available. Just head to the American Heart Association. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Still so glad Timmy is around. He's a good guy and a big part of our uh, morning show family. Yes, he is. Glad you're around, Timmy. Outside with live camp, clouds are kind of hanging tough. And uh, again, Justin is tracking some shower activity. Yeah, cloudy right now here in San Antonio. We are starting to see a few showers that work their way into town. The radar reveals that uh, mainly on the north side and on the south side of Bear County is where we're seeing most of the action. We'll zoom in a little bit closer on some of this rain up here in northern Bear County. And yes, there is a lightning strike there, so some actual thunderstorms involved here too. You may get some pretty good brief rain out of this. It's not going to add up to a whole lot, but it's moving into places like Timberwood Park, Bulverde, Leon Springs, just north of Holotus and back down towards Medina Lake. All seeing rain at this hour. Meantime, they're in the southern part of Bear County and down towards Divine and Lytle, also seeing some decent downpours. Everything's working east and northeast, and once this band of rain sort of works through, We'll be done. We'll be done with the rain chances today. You can kind of see that here on the uh, satellite radar picture, the back edge of that rain and even the back edge of the cloud cover. Uh, and that should be here by this afternoon. We'll get some sun, although uh, temperatures are still going to be on the cool side after that front that moved through last night. So 58 degrees, two o'clock, 60 by four o'clock. We'll call it partly cloudy. We'll still get some breezy winds northeasterly 10 to 15 miles per hour. And as we talked about earlier, a fantastic weekend on the way. We'll look at that forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. While the big game gets most of the headlines, there's still a lot of action taking place off the field on Super Sunday. RJ Marcus joins us live to look at some bizarre bets that can be made and preview <laughs> the commercials. Yes, uh, definitely. It's an interesting day for everything that takes place away from the game itself. Um, obviously a huge day when it comes to uh, gambling in Vegas uh, in the states where that is legal. And of course, we start with these ads because they always get so much attention. That was a great year. No. Yeah, it really sucks. It sucked, donkey. Good one. <laughs> wow. I just wanted okay, to say, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar are still broadcasting from Wayne's mom's basement in Aurora, Illinois, as Mike Myers and Dana Carvey have joined forces once again. They were the duo that brought Wayne's World to life in the 90s. It was a very popular Saturday Night Live skit there, back to promote just Uber Eats. Movie. All right, moving on to another commercial here. Uh, this is uh, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis bringing back that old song, that old Shaggy song, you remember that one. Um, and then we have some other ones here from Will Ferrell, where he is basically going after Norway. You could see him sort of punching a globe there. <laughs> this is for a GM ad that Will Ferrell uh, did with uh, Keenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live as well. And this is basically all kind of an electric car thing, but it is classic Will Ferrell sort of he, craziness. He wants to dominate Norway and their yes. use of electric vehicles. Yes, he does. <laughs> Um, and it has a nice little interesting twist there sort of at the end, but um, a lot of different commercials uh, that are coming out. Of course, you're going to get commercials for Amazon and of beer companies. That's pretty big as well. Um, anything else that you guys are looking forward to when it comes to these commercials? Because sometimes they, they're all released early now. Mm -hmm. They're not even like you don't see them during the game. But what do you guys think? I have seen the Will Ferrell one in its entirety <laughs> really? already online, no but wonder. I haven't seen the other ones. No, yeah. I, 
They so look pretty funny. Yeah. Especially that first one, we were kind of shocked, like, what? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, I think there's a lot of, like, 90s nostalgia going on uh, with these yes. groups of commercials. I get a feeling like people that grew up in my era are probably, like, putting these things together now. Mm -hmm. So pretty interesting stuff there when it I, comes to I also, we've, we've made it known that a lot of the big advertisers are sitting out this year, so I'm anxious to see what takes their place. Yeah, yeah that'll be very interesting as well. So you guys yeah. could find all this stuff online. All right, so another big part of the big game is all the strange bets that are placed in Vegas. And there's a few that definitely caught my attention. The first one is how long it will take Jasmine Sullivan or Eric Church to sing the U.S national anthem. So this is from the moment they sing the first word until they complete saying brave for the first time. Mm. Under two minutes is the favorite right now. That to me seems, uh, I think that's low because it's two of them singing the national anthem. So this will be interesting. There's also bets on who will sing the most words between the two. And will anyone forget a word in the anthem? Hopefully <laughs> that's not the case because... Oh, we hope not. Yeah, it always becomes like a meme or something but like that. But they say you can bet on everything. This proves it. That There you go. Yeah. Um, all right. Next weird bet. How about how many overall songs will The Weeknd play during the halftime show? So The Weeknd gets the halftime honors this year and over eight is the favorite right now. I think last year Jennifer Lopez reached that like within the first two minutes of her performance. <laughs> a lot um, of outfits, yes. Yeah. The Weeknd said he doesn't really expect any special guests for his performances. Uh, there will also be how many wardrobe changes he will have. It's got to be over one, right? That's the betting line right now. And will there be a wardrobe malfunction? I certainly hope that is With not the With the Weeknd? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Yeah. Unless, he, unless he puts the bandages back on yeah. or something. Oh my but goodness. That, that might be something. Yeah, interesting there. Um, and yeah, last interesting prop is how many times uh, Giselle Bunchen, that of course is the ah. supermodel wife, Tom Brady's wife, will be shown during the game over one and a half times is the favorite. Any of those seem like winners to you guys? You know, the, mm. I don't know. I mean, the, <laughs> I think the outfit change, the weekend, you yeah. got to have more than one outfit change, I, I, right? I'm, think, I'm thinking about the one is how many songs will he play? Because it mm. usually winds up being kind of a menagerie, Collaboration. You know, a, yeah. a mix, you know, just, of all just, their hits. To speed yeah. things up, yeah. Yeah. That might so. be one that people will bet on and yeah. win. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, yeah, some definitely some interesting stuff there, guys, as we get ready for Super Bowl or the big game, that is. OK, so now to the most important part of the day, the food and no Super Sunday is complete without a lot of food. The day is the second largest food consumption event in the United States behind only Thanksgiving dinner. Last year before the game, the National Chicken Council, yes, there is a National Chicken Council, reported Americans would eat around 1.4 billion wings on Sunday. That's enough wings to circle the Earth's circumference three times. The wings aren't the only thing flying around. Roughly 28 million pounds of chips and 8 million pounds of guacamole are consumed during Super Sunday. And did you know and acid sales also go up by 20% the day after the big game. Yeah. Maybe all that heartburn explains why more than 1.5 million people will call in sick to work the next day. Oh, how funny. Yeah. <laughs> so it's also uh, some beverage probably consumption there as well. I would yeah. imagine. Any favorite snacks, foods? Um, I'm, I'm all about the wings. Guacamole here. I, yeah. I don't know. I just like all snack foods. <laughs> say Pringles. <laughs> just say Pringles. <laughs> Pretzels, Pringles, yeah. Pop popcorn, yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you, RJ. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Right now it's 940, 53 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9 and Owen Wilson and Selma Hayek star as people moving between reality and simulation. But which is which? A look at Bliss next. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. Now I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for, a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Woo, that is a lot of pressure there so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at ksatdeals.com. Can I get a whiskey? Double. You're real. Sorry. 
I want to tell you something really cool. You see all these people outside? They're not real. This is a simulation. Owen Wilson and Salma Hayek move between realities in bliss. You ready? There's my guy. Welcome home. Hayek's Isabel claims the bright, shiny world is the real one. Wilson's Greg isn't so sure. I'm a little disoriented. You're my guy. Hayek decided to play her character as a drug addict. Instead of being a parallel universe because it's a stimulation, they're just drug addicts that are looking for an escape and they use substances to, to escape their chaotic reality that they've created for themselves. I'm scared. Your head's not on straight. It's almost like a trick being played. That fits with discussions Wilson had with writer-director Mike Cahill. You know, alcoholics and addicts and, you know, there's so many different kinds aren't signing up to be addicts. They're kind of falling into another reality uh, that's very powerful and has a really uh, strong pull. One of these days, you're going to have to choose between these worlds. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Yeah, I'm with you, Steph. It's weird to see him in a non-comedic role. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to laugh, but you're, you're waiting, waiting for mm -hmm. him to say something funny. Mm -hmm. It'll be different. Justin's here. Uh, not only are you tracking some showers, you are have also done some math on some temperature extremes. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, it was very warm yesterday in places like Del Rio, where it was like 92. It was a record yesterday, 94 down in the valley. That was a hot spot across the country, uh, cold up north. And some of that cold air is headed our way next. We'll talk about that in just a second. First, though, let's get right to the radar because we are uh, getting some Decent thunderstorms, in fact, up across the northern part of Bear County now. Some reports of thunder and lightning up there, and you can see the returns just north of Holotus and along the north side there, just north of 1604. That's where some of the uh, quick downpours will be, and that's where you're going to hear some rumbles of thunder, maybe a little bit loud. So just a heads up, nothing severe, but uh, it is moving west to east and uh, tracking through Bear County right now. We also have a few more showers back off to the west that will move through. So we could get some showers here in San Antonio over the next hour or so. Leon Springs, that's where the heaviest rain is right now, and you can see some of those lightning strikes. And in fact, we're seeing more just within the last, say, uh, 30 minutes or so. This will work its way towards Timberwood Park, Eclipse Stone Oak there on the north side and cross 281. So heads up there, and then some showers along 35 as well, places like Divine and Lytle. You've been seeing some rain this morning. There could be a few rumbles of thunder with this batch of rain too, as it works east and northeast. A little bigger view, we were seeing some showers down to the south. Those look to be falling apart a little bit. But the, the reason we're seeing this activity this morning, a little disturbance rolling through in the upper parts of the atmosphere, just enough to get this uh, shower and storm activity going. Once it moves east of us, though, we'll be done with the rain, and it looks like it's also helping to clear out the clouds a little more on the back side of it, so we could see some sun sooner rather than later. Still, it's going to be a cool day, and right now we're looking at cloudy skies. 51 degrees at the airport, 52 Stinson, 53 at Kelly, 52 at Randolph, and notice the winds are still breezy out of the north and east. 49 in Comfort, 49 Canyon Lake, 53 in New Braunfels. Very different today than yesterday. It's 54 right now in Del Rio, and you will not be seeing record high temperatures today. Wind gusts anywhere from 20 to 25 miles per hour. That northeasterly wind, it will die down some a little bit later today. So the forecast calls for a high right around 60. We'll get those clouds to clear out, and the northeasterly wind should calm to about 5 to 15, I'd say by 4, 5, 6 o'clock. Here's what the forecast looks like as far as cloud cover goes. And this does show the clouds moving out later this afternoon, but building back in tomorrow morning. So we start off your Saturday with cloudy skies, but those clouds will go away quickly. We'll be back in the sun by, I'd say, lunchtime, and your weekend's looking great. 70 on Saturday and 70 on Sunday. Very consistent here, but more sun probably on Sunday. Here's the current setup. Our front is well to the south, but again, we have that little disturbance working through in the upper parts of the atmosphere. Temperatures 37 Lubbock, 45 Dallas, 43 in Waco. Behind that front, it is cooler. And some really cold stuff up north. Negative four right now in International Falls, six in Minneapolis. And there's more cold air headed their way. 
and potentially our way as we get into next week. Sunday morning, lows in Minneapolis, negative 13. We've been talking about that for several days now. This cold air spills south by Tuesday, maybe moving into Texas. We'll still be looking at warm weather. By Wednesday, it's on our doorstep. Temperatures will probably start to tumble, and we think by Thursday we could be in some pretty cold air. There's still some chances for the timing to be altered a little bit here. That's sort of the general thinking. 70 tomorrow, 70 on Sunday, 73 Monday. And again, those changes next week. We could also see some rain chances with this, which is great news. We'll be right back. I am Dr. Adina Williams Lawson, president of St. Phillips College. From Arizona to California, Dr. Lawson's career in education has taken her across the globe, especially during her time with NASA. NASA had not had a teacher in space since Krista McAuliffe. My job was to stand up the education enterprise at NASA, giving teachers an opportunity for students to nominate their teachers to become astronauts. Awards and recognition fills her office walls as she made her mark in every role. Every position I have held throughout my entire professional career, I was either the first black or the only black in that position. That is, until she came to St. Philip's College, where she spent the next 14 plus years following in the footsteps of other African American leaders. To come to St. Philip's College and then to learn about the founding president that was here for 52 years. If I could only be half as good or make half the contributions, then I count it as a success. And after being named one of the top 10 most dominant HBCU leaders in the country, you could say she's well on her way. I know that St. Phillips College and the leadership the employees, we're making a difference in the lives of students. And so when you can see that and experience it in real time, that's what keeps me here. Uh, we just found out that it's possible we've been grilling our grilled cheese all wrong this whole time. Yes, um, I'm wrong about it. And uh, apparently this person who wrote the article has been doing it the wrong way for 30 years. So it's on TikTok. And we have now learned a foolproof way to flip a grilled cheese without making any mistakes. That's right. The viral video shows the grilled cheese cook actually not flipping the sandwich at all. No, as you can see, uh, well, in the TikTok video, it has the idea is to flip the pan instead of the sandwich itself. And while it does look like something you should practice a few times, it seems like a pretty easy way to- Do we not have the video? No, I thought we did. <laughs> you have to- Gretchen? Yeah. Oh. Okay. okay, you have to demonstrate now, Mark. <laughs> So, I'm confused. So come back on camera. All right. So here's here's what happens. Mm -hmm. All right. You can come back on on camera now. There you go. There you okay. Go. So okay. you're holding the grilled cheese the up, and then you flip the pan. You put the pan upside down, ah. and set it like this. I feel and like that, that could go wrong meat. quickly. It would be easier to show you. So <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Good. This is a radio. We apologize. Right. Good luck out there. Have a great.